Colleen, and you're watching a mediocre vlog of my life while I'm on tour. Enjoy! Oh my god, there's so many corn nuts in here. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new day. If you watched my vlog yesterday, or whenever the was last time I posted a vlog, you would know that I had to cancel, or not cancel, but postpone my show in Philly due to travel drama, and it sucked. It was really crappy. And so today is a new day, and I'm planning on it just being a wonderful day. I am manifesting that today is a wonderful day because I swear I am cursed. Like, how is it that I have never canceled a show in my entire career until the first time I canceled a show I think honestly or postponed the show was like this year I can't even think of another time where I did and all of a sudden I've been touring for over a decade and I've, I've canceled like four shows this year so far and I've never done it my whole life until now. what is going on so I am just like this has the what's no I'm I'm done with this I don't I refuse this I don't accept this into my life I am done canceling shows I'm done postponing shows I'm done with bad things happening so we are all gonna work together guys all of us we're all gonna work together to improve our lives and manifest goodness and positivity that's what we're gonna do. Do I believe in manifestation? Not really. Whatever. It doesn't hurt to try. Oh my god, I have to go on late. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm not late. I'm gonna be on time. Today's gonna be a great day, and I'm on time to everything. And nothing bad is gonna happen today. I'm not late at all. I'm very on time. Even if the clock says I am late, I'm probably not. Oh my god, I gotta go. Hi guys. Okay. I am now in New York, not New York City. I'm in like Long Island area, New York section. So Huntington tomorrow and so far so good. Doesn't look like we're gonna reschedule it or anything. So knock on wood. Hold on, it's very dark. For, I'm going to turn on a light. There, now you can see me. Anyway, I'm unpacking my stuff. I've got a lot to do tonight. I need to get settled first. So usually what I do when I get to a hotel, as if any of you ask, no one cares, I kind of unpack my stuff and settle so I feel like less like, <gasps> I do my makeup in bed in the mornings, so I always like to put my makeup like on the nightstand table next to me. One of the show laptops. I will be working on the show tonight, so that's gonna be, this will be my work bed, this will be my sleep bed. My air wrap thingy and my toiletry bag goes into the bathroom, be right back. My clothing bags just go anywhere that's not in the way. <laughs> put them over here on this countertop. My facial steamer will be by the bed because I steam my face in the morning and at night now because I have an injured vocal cord issue. And my snacks. Brandon goes to the bathroom. Tripod goes with you. That big suitcase is actually the easy bag to unpack. This one's a little more complicated. I feel like Mary Poppins with this bag. Anyway, I've got my three batteries that I always try to keep charging when I'm traveling and at home just because I go through batteries like crazy when I'm filming. I always bring little microphones with me in case I have to podcast or if I have time to podcast because I usually travel on the weekends and that's usually when we record the podcast. I have my medicine bag, which is like, you know, Tylenol, cold and flu type of stuff and allergy medicine, birth control, all that fun stuff. My SD card bag. <gasps> My corn nuts spilled. More electronics. This is kind of like a get ready with me at my hotel. I guess it's a un get ready with me. Is this my nighttime routine in a hotel? My daytime, I don't know what it is. Anyway, oh my God, there's so many corn nuts in here. My phone charger gets plugged in by the bed. There we go. Got everything unpacked, which means now I can work on my show and edit. And I might have to make a little target run tonight and grab a couple little props, but that's pretty much it. Is this entertaining? No. I feel like there are so many stories I could tell you guys from the last 24 hours. I don't even know where to begin, so I feel like I probably just will never even tell them. But yeah, it's been a really crazy, intense, sad, weird last 24 hours. What the heck is on my roof? There's something taped to the ceiling. Look at this tape on the ceiling. Like, what is going on? What? Why is that there? Oh, it's like a streamer. Someone taped up a streamer. Oh, it must have been someone's birthday or something and they decorated in here. Oh, that's cute and sweet. That's very nice. That's very sweet. Hi. Am I about to paint a hat on the floor of my hotel room when I should be sleeping? Yes. Uh, is it necessary for me to do this for my show to happen tomorrow? No. But does my brain think that I have to do it in order for my show to happen tomorrow? Yes. In fact, there's a bunch of things my brain has made up for me to do when I could be sleeping, but instead I will be doing these other things because my brain is dumb. So I'm gonna paint this hat green <laughs> and no one who comes to the show will even notice that I'm wearing a green hat because I will be on my head for about four seconds. Not even, probably two seconds. So far, so good. Okay, now I'm blowing up a beach ball. 
So now I've got a beach ball. I'm gonna wrap it in white duct tape. I don't know that I have enough. I'm gonna try. Okay, I had enough to kind of cover them enough-ish. And now I need to put black dots in the middle so they can look like little eyeballs. Okay, so to make the dots in the center, I've put duct tape on a piece of paper because to just make duct tape circles, I feel like would be hard. So I'm gonna cut circles off of this and then put those on. But I'm gonna draw the circles on the back so that it's, you know, circles are hard to do. Are they? I don't know. Okay, I added little handles for myself to grab quickly so I can pick them up quickly. <laughs> and then, do they look like eyeballs? Oh, yes, no, I can't see because it's in front of my face. I don't know, should I put eyelashes on it? I don't know. I need to go to bed. I'm about to say something really weird. And um, also, I'm late. Uh, are we, that's not the weird thing I was gonna say. Anyway, I I think I understand why some of you watch my videos. And I, it's never made any sense to me why people like really want to watch my daily life, especially since I've been vlogging and I feel like all my vlogs are like boring nothingness. Whenever people are like, oh my gosh, you've helped me through things. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, I'm just, I'm just me or like if, I don't know. Anyway, and I know this is like a weird thing to say, I just I just figured it out. Okay, so a couple of days ago, the one of the worst days ever where we were traveling and couldn't make it to Philly and it was a horrible, horrible day. That day sucked and the day started off really bad. And I didn't talk about it on here. I tried to vlog about it, but I got too wordy and talked too long, too much. And then I was like, I don't think anyone's gonna relate to this anyway. And everyone's just gonna think I'm stupid. So I filmed this whole clip and I literally just in the middle of talking about it, was just like, I'm not gonna talk about this. And I turned off the camera. And I gotta go. You guys are not gonna believe this. I'm at the venue. It's a really cool venue. I'm gonna have to give you guys a tour of it later. But I remember to finish my story. Like I was cut off at the hotel and I drove all the way to the venue, got here, was distracted by a thousand things. And now I'm remembering to finish the story. That's crazy. Anyway, so basically uh, what happened was I woke up, we drove to the airport and it was a very stressful morning. Halfway to the airport, I realized I didn't bring any of my luggage. So Corey, me, Stu, and Eric are all in the car. Eric drove us to the airport and halfway there, I was like, I don't have my bag. I don't have my suitcase. I don't have my wallet. I don't have anything. Literally brought nothing. So we had to turn around obviously to eat all my stuff, but I was so mad at myself and so embarrassed and felt so stupid because how does a person go to the airport to go on a trip and forget their suitcase their bag like it wasn't like oh i forgot my phone oh i forgot my wallet oh i forgot my keys like i forgot everything i have like like how do you forget something this big and this big like that's very embarrassing luckily we left really early so we had enough time to go home and grab it and then get to the airport but i literally beat myself up so much and this is something that happens to me a lot i'll do something really dumb like that and my brain will just be so distracted that i will forget big things and important things or little small things i was so upset about that that i started crying <laughs> right when it happened and i realized i forgot my suitcase i was like i'm so stupid i'm so stupid i'm so sorry guys and i started like verbally out loud beating myself up in front of the boys and they're like it's fine it's not that big of a deal and i was like no, i'm so stupid and like i realized that my reaction was kind of big and i was looking kind of crazy so then i just like turned and looked out the window and i just cried staring out the window because then i was embarrassed that my reaction was big but i was also mad at myself for being so stupid like how do you forget your suitcase when you're traveling like that's so dumb it's like the one thing you need i just w was so upset about it. i beat myself up about that for like an hour and i had a really big reaction to it so anyway i started telling you guys this in the vlog yesterday and then i was like this is stupid no one's gonna relate to this like how do you forget your freaking suitcase um when you go to the airport like this is just an embarrassing story about how dumb you are and so i stopped filming i was so embarrassed and so mad at myself i started crying and i was like i'm so stupid like i was saying this stuff out loud in the car i was like i'm so stupid how did i do that because like that is so stupid like how do you you're you're going on a plane how do you forget your suitcase i felt so dumb and Anyway, today on TikTok, I was scrolling through TikTok and I saw a woman and she was like, hey guys, so my kids are inside uh, the restaurant with their dad eating dinner and you might be wondering why am I in the car eating my food in the car by myself when my kids and my husband are inside the restaurant. Um, it's because I forgot my pants. I'm not wearing any pants. This is what I look like right now. And she shows she literally was wearing her pants. Like she forgot to put on pants. And it made me feel so much better. I could cry. 
it made me be like, oh my God, okay, I'm not the only one who does things like that. Like when you have such a crazy mental load, especially as a mom, but for me personally, like as a mom with like ADHD and like how my brain works, I get so focused on so many other things that then I forget sometimes to take care of myself or even just forget things in general. And it's embarrassing and it like leads me to beat myself up and leads to like, like mental health issues. It sounds extreme and dramatic, but it really does. Like the amount I beat myself up over things like that. And to see just another mom being like, hey, I forgot to put on pants today. And I left the house and drove all the way to this restaurant without my pants on. It made me go feel so much better. It made me feel so much less alone. I was so grateful to her. Like I just wanted to like reach through my phone and give her a hug and be like, I know you're just making a stupid silly TikTok that's probably just like a silly nothingness to you, but like you have no idea how much that helps me <laughs> and impacted me and made me feel better. And in that moment, I was like, oh, this is what these people are saying <laughs> when they when they say that to me in my vlogs because I've always felt that way about like you guys when you tell your stories to me it makes me feel so much less alone it makes me feel so much better but to see like a girl like on my social media like just a random other mom who just had a similar experience think some that like that is something I would do and like it just made me feel so much better and so Thank you to all of you who always tell me your stories and the things you go through that can help me to relate and feel less alone. And I'm glad that my weird, boring little stories sometimes can make some of you guys feel less alone. And in turn, you guys tell me your stories, it makes me feel less alone. I just love this little community that we've created. Sometimes the internet can do so much good, even with stupid little stories like that. Like that is a funny, silly, stupid five second TikTok that that woman made that everyone in the comments is just laughing at. They're just like, ah, oh, this is so crazy. How do you bring your pants? But for me, like it like, <laughs> made me feel so much, like it had literally helped my mental health to know like, oh my God, I'm not the only person who does weird stuff like that. Anyway, I'm gonna get ready for my show, but I just wanted to tell that story. <laughs> Time to do a show. I'm not wearing lipstick. I gotta find lipstick. I gotta show you guys this theater after the show. It's really cool. my best show ever absolutely not but like I really did think like when I got the news that I had like vocal injury and the hemorrhage and the nose like I really thought like what if this ruins my career and I can never sing again like and I was so like sad and so scared like there were so many moments on stage where I just like looked at the audience and like I was so grateful that I, I still get to do this and that like I really had a moment where I thought I'd never get to do it again and it made me like appreciate it so much more I mean I've always appreciated it I've always loved being on tour I've always loved performing I just appreciated it so deeply tonight I'm so so grateful that I was able to sing and get sound out and I hope I didn't damage anything. I really tried to like, I was doing my vocal therapy all day today and warmed up my voice properly and like did everything I was supposed to do and didn't eat the foods I wasn't supposed to eat. Like I was like being really careful and I've been really careful like since I found out about it, like being on vocal rest and really taking that seriously and just, I don't know, I'm just so, so, so grateful that I was able to perform tonight. I had so much fun on stage and it almost reminded me of like when I first started doing all this. I started touring like 14 years ago or something like that. And I was in London. The audience stood up and gave me a standing ovation. It was like a small little theater, a few hundred people. I walked off stage and I just wept. I wept because I couldn't believe this is my life. I couldn't believe how lucky I was that I got to perform for a living and I got to make people laugh on stage. Like what a dream come true for me. And the fact that it's like 14 years later and I still get to do that and I still get to have that feeling. Like I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to you guys that you watch my videos and that you get tickets and come see me live and perform. You literally made my dreams come true and I'm so grateful that I've gotten to do it for so long like most people just get like their 15 minutes of fame and I don't feel worthy of it I don't feel deserving of it I don't feel like it doesn't make any sense to me that I get to do this for a living I'm just feeling really really grateful so it's almost like I'm almost like 
grateful for the vocal injury because it made me appreciate my job so much more than I ever had before. I never didn't appreciate it, like I've always loved my job, but it really just made me appreciate it times a million because you never know when the things you love the most can get like stripped away from you. And that's kind of how I felt when I found out that I had a vocal injury and that it could be a permanent issue. Anyway, I'm just so glad I got to be on stage tonight and with everything that's been going on, like the vocal modes and like the hemorrhage and then the travel drama yesterday and not making it to the show in Philly and like all that, like oh, it just felt so good to be on stage tonight even though it wasn't my best show I've ever done. Like it was just, I was really glad to be here. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm going to take off my dress, <laughs> put on regular clothes, clean up my dressing room. And then I want to show you guys this theater because it's really cool. Okay, so this theater's super cool. I guess there's like a speakeasy here. A secret door. So we're going to see it. Oh my goodness, we have like a chauffeur. Right this way to your left. Ooh. I feel like I'm about to do like an escape room. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, cool. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Hello. This is, thank you. It was in the 1920s, so the owners thought it'd be a fitting vibe for yeah. a speakeasy theme. Yeah, that's so cool. 